Good morning, Mr. Anyago. Good morning, and thanks for having me. I'm actually the Commissioner for Information. I was the Chief President. Please do bring us up to speed on the latest efforts in the state to combat the spread of COVID-19, even as NCDC has commended your state. Well, thank you very much, Amaka, for having me this morning. And let me commend those of you at the Plus TV team for the wonderful job we are doing, particularly with respect to informing Nigerians on a number of issues. Thank you Now, straight to the question you asked, I want to tell you that uh, first we appreciate God for helping us and blessing the little efforts we have made in ensuring that uh, we don't have uh, so much of uh, the transmission of uh, COVID-19 in our state. In the first instance, on the 1st of April, what we did uh, was to close the, to ensure that we lock down the state. But before then, we had ordered that no uh, entry or exit into or, or, or out of our state. The reason why the governor uh, did that was because we felt that what was happening in uh, Lagos and a few other states in the um, Federation is something that any other state needs to be careful about. We had thought that the federal government would take that uh, initiative to lock down almost every part of the state because it was important that every part of the Federation, because it was important that that action be taken. It was given the, the speed with which, uh, at which you have um, uh, COVID-19 spread across a number of uh, areas outside the, the Nigeria, you will understand that it's important for anybody to take very concrete steps. The reason is this. COVID-19, we are told, does not have any uh, vaccine, of course, being a virus, and that there's no treatment at the moment. And that the only thing you can do is to manage the different uh, symptoms. And beyond that, the, uh, we have seen that other clients were overwhelmed by uh, this particular scourge. <laughs> and yes, we have made arrangements, particularly with respect to ensuring that we sensitize our people, we have also been able to prepare about four, uh, uh, four isolation and treatment centers in addition to 12 uh, areas where we can indeed uh, hold a uh, person suspected to have this particular virus. We have been able to equip it, but our major strength, our major strength is in our ability to ensure that uh, we, we reduce the number of persons that may be affected by sensitizing our people. And that's what we have done so far. We give God glory for blessing our modest efforts. All right, Commissioner, there are also reports that despite the lockdown order by Governor Ifani Okowa, uh, commercial drivers and commuters have continued to ply the Ugeli Wari route along the east-west road, among other routes. Are you aware of this? And if yes, what is being done to enforce the lockdown? Well, we are aware that in some places, not only in Ugeli and um, Uwe, that uh, some persons are actually applying the rules, but I can report to you that we have achieved not less than 75% uh, success with respect to the decision we took. We do also understand that times are hard for our people, due to uh, other members of this country, that of course a number of individuals survive on day-to-day -day basis, in which case you earn an income today with which you can survive tomorrow. And that has been a major challenge, which is why we have also been able to distribute palliatives to our people, even as we asked where many individuals and those who are blessed amongst us to also fill in the gap by uh, reaching out to those around them, particularly the very, very uh, underprivileged or those who you classify as uh, vulnerable groups in the society. Then we have also instructed security agencies to try as much as possible, even while being very courteous, to enforce this rule so that at the end of the day, we're able to open up our states for normalcy to return. These are not the best of times for anybody, any government, or indeed any people. And uh, the, the, the people in Delta are also experiencing what is uh, happening across the length and breadth of uh, even the globe at this moment. Of course, I'm sure you've seen the price of oil, which is the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. You have also seen the downturn in a number of activities on account of a closing down of the different economies, both outside the shores of Nigeria and within the different states of the Federation. That will, of course, have effects on the people. And what that means is that individuals who want to move out, who want to give excuses as to why they have to be on the street for them to survive. But we're pleading with them that this time we need their cooperation for us to be able to defeat COVID-19, letting them understand that the battle is between them and that is the people and the government on the one side, and then COVID-19 on the other side. And for us to win this battle, we need the full cooperation of our people because once they cooperate with the government, we will indeed be able to defeat COVID-19 and then have a better story to tell at the end of the day. We don't want what is happening in other parts of the states of the Federation 
where we are seeing the number spiral to double digits to also become a lot in data. Mm -hmm. We, by the grace of God, do hope that we don't go beyond the number, four numbers that we have at the moment. Okay, let's go to other matters now. We also understand that the state government has released 25 convicted inmates at the Nigerian Correctional Service, Kwale uh, Custodial Center in Delta State, as part of measures to decongest the prisons in the era of COVID-19. Is this enough, really? Uh, shouldn't the numbers be more? It is not. It's, it, well, it can be more, but the issue is that it's, it's important you don't um, cut your nose to spite your face, because the, if you just decide that you want to decongest the prison and you release those who may have committed heinous crime, you also discover that you're not doing the uh, taking the right decision. Mm -hmm. Secondly, in trying to review the cases and uh, the reasons why some persons are held in the correctional center, you need to be able to look at those that may have shown remorse, those that when you release them, they will not also become a, a further threat to the society. So that why we're asking people to stay at home, we're not also releasing those who will make them uncomfortable in their homes. So it's, it's um, something that you need to uh, look at from a lot of uh, perspectives. The fact is that the, the chief judge and indeed those who are supposed to take a look at these, uh, these issues will continue to look at it with a view to either bringing in the principle of prerogative of mercy or taking other steps aim at decongesting the correctional centers. Mm -hmm. But in Delta State, we have been able to also assist the federal government to build uh, correctional centers that are much more befitting. Not long ago, we had one in Warri that came in on account of a heavy damper. If you go there today, you will not understand that in less than one month, we'll be able to bring it back. And then we're hoping that as we make progress, we will help them, even if it belongs to the exclusive list, that we're able to assist the federal government to build a much more uh, befitting correctional uh, centers. The reason is that even if it belongs to the federal government, the people who are held in these correctional centers are not federal people. They are debtors. And that is why we think that uh, we can continue to collaborate with the federal government with a view to ensuring that the people are held uh, in a better position. Honorable Commissioner, let's talk about palliatives. What are, what are the palliatives uh, in place and how are you ensuring that it gets to the right people at this time? What we have done, starting from the state level, is to set up a high-powered committee. The governor chairs the committee at the state level, where we have also been able to set up a committee at the local government level, a seven-man committee. And we took steps to ensure that those set members of the uh, committee are individuals that can be held accountable. At the local government level, you have the commissioner from the local government, the House of Assembly member from the local government, and of course the local government chairman as the chairman. The other four persons that make up the committee are, are non-politicians. One, you have a very senior uh, uh, man of God as either a priest or a pastor or possibly a venerable. Or you, you also have a, a two women who are not also supposed to be politicians, a very senior civil servant or somebody who either serving or retired. And of course, another very prominent member of that particular local government who could be either a man or a woman. Then this committee was also charged with the responsibility of setting up another committee at the ward level that had only one statutory member, and that's the councillor representing that particular ward. And then you have the president general of that community, you have a representative of the palace, you also have a religious person, either a pastor, a venerable, or possibly a, a, a priest. And then you also have uh, two women who must also uh, reflect uh, the certain, um, uh, certain profession or trade. And then, of course, you also have the, another person who, of course, had to uh, be somebody that is respected within that community. The reason why we did that is that these individuals know their brothers and sisters. Yesterday, I was even in my own local government where we also distributed our own palliatives to the different wards. We have 14 wards in my local government. And we met with these persons before we started the distribution. This morning, as soon as I'm done with this interview with you, I'll be proceeding to the local government again to supervise some of the words that have been assigned to me to ensure that this very, very palliative is reaching the poorest of the poor or the very, very vulnerable. I use this word very, very, for you to understand that the food is not meant for anybody. There are those that may be a little vulnerable, but they can still cope. Rather than giving individuals just one or two cups of rice, it's important that we give them what can sustain them for a little while than trying to feed everybody and at the end of the day you cannot even feed them in just one meal. 
So if we, in a community we are taking 300 households, we make sure that none of them will have equivalent less than a 10 kg bag of rice and then also another 10 kg bag of beans. Why we are doing it is to ensure that at least if you give them that particular household, these items, it can sustain them for a little while. Even as we continue to plead with uh, well-meaning individuals, like I said earlier, to assist government in filling in the gap. That is the first trend and first intervention. We are monitoring the processes, and we do hope that our uh, people continue to cooperate with us so that the no two distant time we're able to open our state economy for them to continue to try. Because after all, before now, government wasn't the one feeding the people. But we have to assist because the decision we took to safeguard the life of our people has to also a very large extent uh, brought on toward hardship. But we believe that what we did is the best decision that we could have taken because if somebody sustained an injury, you cannot just leave the injury because of the pain of iodine. When you know that without applying that iodine, mm -hmm. there is a tendency that that injury may attract a tetanus. And when that happens, you wouldn't have done any good to that person. Mm -hmm. So we can continue to plead with our people to see reasons why we have to shut down the state because we believe that we have the ability by the grace of God to revive the economy when it goes down. But we don't have, neither do we understand the knowledge of waking up people who are dead. And so we are choosing the option of allowing the economy to go the way it is now, and later we can begin to revive it. Because not doing so may amount to us, or to the government, allowing the people to die. And Honorable the Commissioner day, for back. Delta State, uh, thank you so very much for your time, uh, Charles Aniago. And please do stay safe.